Yeah, so this is my presentation. Uh, I'm happy to be um, presenting this project. It's part of my dissertation, uh, my PhD dissertation. Uh, I am Sebastian. I come from Peru, but I had a I studied a program in in the U.S. Uh, so I uh, my work is focused on different topics, mostly about indigenous communities in Latin America and science and technology studies. And you can, you know, there is like the link, well, not the link, but the QR code for my, you know, work and everything. But today I, I'm i going to present about the, relate, the interactions between potatoes, commercialization and citizen science platform and, you know, different types of classification systems, Western and like non-Western classification system and how that relates to uh, potato conservation in, in, in the Andes, specifically in Peru, where I come from. So I had this first slide about like why I think uh, uh, agrobiodiversity matters. So agrobiodiversity is basically the the study of different types of, of plants and how the conservation of different types of plants in different regions in the world is has some benefit from the from the communities there and also for different types of external stakeholders and, and the global community in general. So in, in the case of Andean agrobiodiversity, especially in the case of Andean potatoes, there are a lot of different topics why uh, different experts and, and you know researchers think that it's important to, to protect biodiversity. Um, so the first one is obviously for the uh, climate change adaptation because different types of, of potatoes that you see here, that you see different names in Quechua, they all have different, uh, they are grown at different altitudes and they also have different types of frost resistance uh, traits and also they have uh, some resistance to specific uh, 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 pathogens uh, in, uh, in in the place that they are grown. So that that's also uh, important for researchers and it's important for 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 the growers in different places because they know how which types of potatoes adapt better to different types of uh, ecosystems. Uh, the the next one is more about the sustainable practices because these these potatoes are grown by like small small holders uh, farmers in different regions and a lot of them uh, really uh, have a strong uh, commitment to not include any type of uh, commercial pesticides into the practice of 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 their of growing potatoes and other under crops and they, they specifically in some places they they ban uh, what they call the the chemicals in in their own in their own words uh, another another topic that is important for 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 biodiversity and and another thing that is coming up in many many researchers and many in research uh, publications is the relationship between food security and nutrition. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research that shows that different types of potatoes have different types of nutritional benefits for the people that consume them and they have more uh, a higher amount of, of specific nutrients that are beneficial for, for health. Uh, but in, in, in my project, what I really focus more is in the last one, is about the uh, the niche markets and the cultural markets that have emerged in Peru in like the last I would say fifteen years or so since the since that this uh, uh, gastronomic uh, events took place in the early two thousands with uh, different fairs in like Mistura and others that you know uh, increase the attention of 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 Peruvians uh, into the uh, Andean food that was previously neglected and that was, you know, important for many people to recognize his, his cultural value. So, but here in, in this presentation and, and basically this, this what I focus in one of my chapters is the relationship between fair and care principles. So there are, these these two principles are important for what is called data governance. And the fair principles are basically, uh, according to the literature uh, that emphasize machine action ability. So this is the capacity of, of computational systems to find access, interoperate and reuse data with no 
known or minimal human intervention. And, and there are also the care principles, which stand for more, uh, they provide more, uh, they focus more on the, um, on respecting the rights and interests of indigenous people in general. So there's this, uh, in the literature, there's interaction between fair and care, which seems that in, in ideal terms, you, you, you want to have fair and care uh, interacting in, in your platform or in your, you know, in your catalog or in your digital platform that you are going to, you know, uh, design, develop, or, you know, or maybe you, you need to adjust some, some, some data here. So what I'm showing here is like, there are two different ways in which, uh, I'm going to be looking at this in my project. So there are two, two, two platforms. Uh, one platform is called uh, Wikipapa, which I'm going to show later. And the next, the other one is Bar Scout, which is uh, an app for smartphones to upload uh, uh, images and, and a lot of descriptors into the into the into the app and then into the Wikipapa website. But here, I just wanted to present like the what what was happened before that. We have a lot of physical catalogs, like here in the in the image you will see different types of catalogs of, of potatoes of different regions. And you have the, the image here in the bottom that shows how this classification works. And I'm not showing this because it's important to know like how this was done uh, in person and then how Wikipapa is kind of replicating a lot of these uh, descriptors and 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 ways to classify potatoes but online so that's that's what i what i studied in my in my project so um so here's like a screenshot of of wikipapa i, I put a qr code here if you, if you are curious about like logging in and like you can browse around it's in spanish so can be a little bit difficult to navigate for those that are not familiar with spanish but the idea is that you have a screen when you have the image of potatoes, you have like your account and you can have a lot of observations there. And it, it Wikipapa, it, it's like an online catalog of, of potatoes. So it's based on the previous catalog information as well as new observation of uh, different types of users that can be farmers, students, anyone that has access to Bar Scout and can, you know, upload this information. Um, so, so quickly, what you can see here is the name in the top. So this is like the the, the kind of the formal name. And then you have different types of like synonyms names or, or alternative names. Some, some potatoes can have like seven alternative names or so, uh, depending on the zone uh, that they are grown and, and that, you know, the language. Uh, you will have more more uh, synonyms in, in, in places that uh, speak Quechua rather than speaks that than rather than places that just focus on that they speak more Spanish. So some of the names are in Quechua and, and some of them are in Quechua and Spanish. Um, some of the names as well are they kind of have this resemblance to colors, shapes, and also uh, body parts or plants. So the name, like the meaning of the names, are the combination of colors and shapes and size and and you know different types of ways that farmers identify potatoes basically. Um, but, and, and this one, this is like more like about the interaction between the, the app and this new uh, brand that uh, that's called Miski Papa. So there I'm working with a, an, a group of, of growers that is called Aguapan. So Aguapan is this national group of potato growers in Peru that just grow uh, Andean potatoes, native potatoes. And they they have their own brand that's called Miski Papa that was created uh, before the pandemic, but during the pandemic they were not able to sell them uh, sell potatoes in person in the fairs because of the restrictions, right? So they came up with this idea of like selling potatoes online via uh, 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 WhatsApp groups and Facebook and, and other online resources, especially in cities like Lima. So they kind of like provided this service with the idea to reduce costs for growers. But currently, Miski Papa is not really a, it's not really a, 
it's it's kind of like it's it's very uncertain the future of Miski Papa because it really depends on on the growers' ability to to kind of uh, commercialize and and transport their potatoes because these potatoes are grown in specific uh, they're not grown all year round and the distance between different cities is kind of complicated to figure out how to organize um, delivery and and everything. Um, so and and this slide shows like I just wanted to show like the commercial value of of potatoes because we often think that you know biodiversity you know has a scientific you know value which is great and and that's why there's a lot of catalogs there's a lot of study about like biodiversity in in different places but in the case of potatoes in in Peru and I think that in other cases as well. Uh, there's this connection between commercialization and conservation of biodiversity, and there's like this relationship between them that one cannot exist with without the other. So you have growers, you have fairs, and you have also people in the gastronomic sector that that kind of they are involved in this development of value chains uh, of of potatoes and other types of products, right? So that's I just wanted to make that connection. Uh, so. So as you can see, I I I mainly interested in the connection between conservation and commercialization and how that that looks like for for potato conservation, and I, I found like many things in my in my dissertation, but here I just wanted to present two of them. So basically, one is more about the fair and care principles. So I think that even though there have been efforts to implement them, there have been so struggling to foster specifically care principles in 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 the case of Wikipub and Bar Scout. And I'm going to present some slides to, to share, like uh, to explain why I think that formalizing biodiversity is important to think about fair and care. And also the next one is more about the economic interest, right? Because uh, the idea is that uh, in the future, you know, there have been some discussions that Wikipapa could include Miski Papa as another uh, service, as another like, uh, feature to sell potatoes inside a Wikipapa uh, interface, right? So that that's kind of raises a lot of questions because you will have like a basically like a online catalog, like a scientific citizen science approach that incorporates more like a e-commerce features inside of inside of the same platform, right? So that raises a lot of questions about the science uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and the uh, how rigorous is this data, and also like the involvement of of farmers into these platforms, right? So and and here, what I'm going to show you is like the idea of traceability and how that show how that is uh, a challenge for for the growers. So I I upload up here. I have some images that show how uh, there are some challenges uh, to operate Barscout, which is a phone app. So you have difficulties like uh, not just offline, offline, you know, functionality, but also to find different types of families. Uh, like inside the app, you can find that you, sometimes you type the name and you, you don't find uh, the username or uh, you have problems to, to kind of like save some data as well. But also beyond those types of functionality, there are, there, there are challenges about like, some types, some some growers, uh, especially because Andean growers usually are above fifty years old, they struggle to use this this these apps. Um, and then um, there's there's challenges related to, uh, uh, for example, they need to create a, a username, a, a gym, a, an email account. Sometimes they they don't have an email account. They use more WhatsApp. To communicate and even even that that's sometimes complicated. So that there are some challenges there, and then you have the challenges in using, uh, in not using but also to kind of formalize the observation. So here you can see uh, it's a little bit like small here, but you can see a check like a blue check, like the blue checks uh, means that this observation was validated but by, by a group of curators in Wikipapa. And uh, if you don't see that, it, it means that it's not validated. So there's not clear, there's not a clear like uh, 
like time frame to to know when your observation will be validated by this group of curators uh because like i took these pictures like this year but if you see the date it's like more like a year ago so it's not clear like when you will get your you know your observation formally included into the catalog the online catalog and if some some observations are not really incorporated into the into the catalog because there have not been you know filling some criteria to be considered a part of the catalog as well um and this one is more about the this slide is more about the e-commerce features because in in this website you have the bios of the of the growers if you look at the qr code you you have like a short bio the name like the family name like where they are located and everything uh, and the idea is to use well when i was talking with the developers and, and the people that were were doing this uh, they told me that the idea is that uh you you can you know identify potentially who like the potatoes of where they are coming from so which family they are like uh if you're buying online you you know where potatoes come from but the idea of like sustaining this over time is is complicated because uh it, it's still you need some logistical and organizational challenges that some of some of the farmers because they 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 spend a lot of time doing other activities they are not really willing or interested in doing so this idea of like thinking that they can take over all the value chain or like focus all their attention to on these types of activities is really uh, complicated and, and like it's not really clear if they are going to do that in the future in the past there was a small team of of members of like some of their uh families uh, younger family they were taking care of this but over time that became unsustainable because that was also cost like an additional cost to their operations uh, so some of the things that i i really wanted to say before i like my time finishes so for like i have like some conclusions and recommendations so i think that both platforms seem to implement focus on care oh, i'm sorry on fair but not necessarily not necessarily about care principles in terms of like thinking about uh the involvement of of of, of these communities like a closer you know participation in, in terms of ethics in terms of like um the collective you know governance of of this uh andean resources uh, andean uh, potatoes um because I think it is they just need to to pay more attention to how how these these uh, growers are really participating in, in these digital interfaces, and and in the future I think uh, the goal should be to to focus more on like the indigenous classification systems instead of like insisting more on the uh, Western uh, science uh, focus on the for example if you look at the catalogs online you see a lot of descriptors that are not really what farmers focus more because i was uh, in in workshops participating with them and they really didn't engage with those descriptors as much that they engage with like the meaning of the names and how that names relate to the different varieties of potatoes so that's something important to to take into consideration and then uh, finally there is uncertainty about the e-commerce features because uh, there's a lot of logistical and organizational challenges because of the, you know, coordinating deliveries in different points of, of the country is also different, difficult for, for them because uh, sometimes you need to, if you're a farmer and you live far away, sometimes you need to walk like eight hours to reach to the nearest village and then you need to pay uh you need to you know walk with your you know potatoes and then you you need to find some form of transportation to to put to move your potatoes from that village to a to a new kind of urban city that is close and then to come to lima so there are like different types of you know things that are challenging so and and, and the main thing i think is to kind of think of ways that you can guarantee viability economic viability but also conservation so that's that's, I think that's currently the challenge there. 
Uh, so yeah, I, I just want to thank everyone for, for your attention. Uh, I can take questions in, in English and Spanish if there's someone that speaks Spanish. Uh, and yeah, so thank you. And just let me know uh, if you have any questions. We got a couple questions. Who was first? Um, I'm going to speak in Spanish. <laughs> eh, hola, muchísimas gracias por, por esta conferencia. Te quería preguntar si han considerado replicar estas actividades o estas, este, estas herramientas en otras áreas, en otros lugares. Porque estaría muy, soy de México y estaría muy interesante ver cómo replicar esto a nivel regional o igual y expandir la información a otros a otras latitudes, vaya. Sí, uh, it's, it's okay if I answer in Spanish, in English, or... Sí, sí, sin pedos. Gracias. Gracias, sí, no, este, un gusto, este, sí, no, este, el, el, al menos en Perú yo conozco el caso de, de la papa y también hay un caso de cacao que se llama Mi Cacao. Es un proyecto este, también con la cooperación alemana que ha empezado hace poco. Acá tengo el, el flyer. Que es un poco esta relación entre ciencia abierta y este, cadenas de valor. ¿no? Yo sé que eh, yo conozco esa otra experiencia, no la conozco tan de cerca, este, pero me gustaría empezar a hacer investigación más cercana con eso. Eh, de otros casos, específicamente no sé, pero yo creo que eh, cuando estuve haciendo mi revisión, también encontré que había grupos en, en África que también están implementando el Bar Scout, pero en África, ¿no? Eh, y tienen otro, otro tipo de cultivos allá que también lo están usando y están fomentando también la participación de mujeres en este tipo de actividades, ¿no? Eh, entonces, esos son los casos que, que yo conozco y creo que hay, hay, hay bastante oportunidad para ver estos temas en, en otros lugares donde hay cultivos, ¿no? donde participan comunidades y también hay cadenas de valor eh, que también están eh, participando de alguna forma en, en este tipo de actividades. Gracias. Uh, quick question. So, uh, I guess more and more scientists are putting the data online, either in comments or in other depository. Um, do you see that as a possibility for Uh, conflicts in the future, because uh, especially if those data are released uh, either as a public domain or creative uh, common license, which allow the use of uh, reusing of the data, which also violates the, the, the care principle that you stated. Yeah, I think that uh, that's that will definitely be a, a, a challenge in the future, uh, because all of the all of these activities are So farmers are aware of this, but are not necessarily actively participating in, in these activities uh, because they lack some skills to kind of like, um, for example, engage in, in these apps or, or, you know, even have the time to, you know, focus on, on these activities. Uh, but I think like younger generations uh, could be uh, also uh, thinking about this. I know that in the case of Aguapan, they have a, a group, uh, a small group of, of young young uh, farmers, uh, you know, sons and daughters that are interested in, in some of these type of activities. But these types of conversations are, are very new for in the case in the case of, of Aguapan and farmers in, in, in Peru. So it's kind of like even starting these conversations about, you know, what what would mean, what what care means, what fair means, like what are, you know. All of these conversations need to need to start at some point. So that I think that could be the first like the first challenge there. But in the future, definitely, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sebastian. Well, we are at time, but thanks so much for joining us remotely and presenting. Great presentation. Thank you. Yeah. No. Thank you very much.